Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kendra. If you are new here and you like true crime, hit that subscribe button to catch all my future videos. Today's case, I do want to give a disclaimer and a trigger warning. If you have had infant loss, child loss, or just do not like to hear about any type of cases involving children, this case today is going to be about a two-year-old child who was murdered. So if that's just not something you would like to hear about, go ahead and skip this video and watch one of my past videos. With that being said, let's get into it. talking about the case of Amari Jordan Nicholson. He was two years old from Las Vegas, Nevada. Now this case just happened within the last two weeks and I live in Las Vegas right now and this is all that everyone is talking about. It is the top story out here right now. So I'm going to be looking down a lot, reading my notes just because the last few days I've been trying to just get all the information I can and put it all into this story so I can share it with you guys. Amari Jordan Nicholson was two years old, born on October 26, 2018, to Taylor Nicholson and Giorgio Hayes. Amari was said to always be happy, singing and dancing around the house, just always had a smile on his face, and his favorite foods were pizza and oranges. He absolutely loved those two foods all the time, and his favorite show was Coco Melon, which is pretty much every kid's favorite show these days on YouTube. <laughs> Taylor was the sole guardian of Amari. His father, Giorgio, was not currently in his life at the time of this, uh, this incident occurring. 4th of July 2018, Taylor meets a man named Terrell Rhodes. They quickly begin a relationship, move in together, and Terrell ends up taking on that role as Amari's father. Amari's father wasn't really in his life because when Taylor was pregnant with Amari, he ended up going to prison for three years for beating Taylor. So he never actually even met his father. So he went to prison for three years and didn't get out until August 2020. That is the only time that Amari's father made an effort to even see him. He had only seen him one time in his whole entire life. I believe his father took him to a water park or just a regular park, but either way, he only saw his father one time. Other than that, Amari and his father would FaceTime here and there, but they didn't really have like that bond or anything like that. I know the father lived in Reno while Amari lived in Las Vegas. So Terrell Rhodes was the only father figure that Amari had ever really known. He often referred to Amari as his stepson. Taylor, Terrell, and Amari lived in Las Vegas, Nevada, and they were staying at an extended stay hotel off of Paradise Road called Emerald Suites. Now, if you're not familiar with extended stay hotels, it's basically just an apartment, a one bedroom apartment, where you can pay weekly or monthly instead of having that contract of a lease. Now, they're not usually the cleanest or they're not in the best of neighborhoods. Um, usually the majority of people who hang out at extended stay hotels or have an extended stay hotel are usually people who are struggling financially or they're into prostitution or drugs. Um, just people who don't have their lives together. Um, I know I wouldn't want to be anywhere near there on my own or especially having my children there, but I'm not saying, um, if you've lived in one of these, I'm not judging you in any way. Everyone has their own situations. I'm just saying a majority of the people who hang out at extended stay hotels, um, they do drugs or they prostitute or they're just not on the light, on the right track with life. On Friday, June 30th, 2021, Taylor decided to fly to Colorado to help her mother because her mother just had surgery on her foot due to a dog attacking her. Now, the dog tore ligaments in her foot and she had to undergo a two-hour surgery and have over 60 stitches in her foot. So she was not mobile. She um, definitely needed help. So Taylor flew out there and she helped take care of her. She flew out Friday around 4 p.m., leaving Amari with Terrell Rhodes um, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Terrell was at first um, okay with Taylor being gone. It didn't really bother him, um, but within a few days, they started getting in little arguments here and there. 
Taylor actually told um, a news reporter that they had a disagreement about something and she had told Terrell that the relationship was over. She had actually said that he poked the bear and she poked back and every couple goes through that pretty much is what she said. I'm not sure what exactly the argument was about, but during the argument, um, she had texted him and said someone will be by to get her belongings. Um, now this is after she said that she was done with the relationship, she no longer wanted to be with him. But keep in mind, her son is still with him while she's in a different state. On Wednesday morning, around 6 in the morning, May 5th, Terrell tries to call Taylor multiple times, but she's not answering. He keeps calling and calling, and then within a few minutes, Taylor finally wakes up to one of his calls and answers. Terrell tells her around 6 in the morning he heard a knock at the door. When he answered the door, it was a lady wearing a gray Adidas sweatsuit. She claimed that she was there to pick up Amari, that she was Amari's biological father's sister, so Amari's biological aunt. He said she had came to the door saying that she's there to pick Amari up, and as Terrell turned around to gather some of Amari's belongings, he was trying to call Taylor at the time, um, and this is when she wasn't answering. The aunt um, is holding Amari at this point, and she ends up saying, we have everything that we need for him, we don't need anything. So Terrell ends up turning around, and the lady allegedly just takes off with Amari. So by the time he figures out what's going on and goes to chase after her, he can't seem to find her anywhere. He doesn't see Amari, he doesn't see this lady, he doesn't see a car. And to remind you, or actually not to remind you because I haven't said it, but they're actually on the third floor. So he didn't see anyone zooming around those stairs or down the hallway, like nothing. So he runs down all the stairs into the parking lot and they were just gone. After Taylor heard this news from Terrell, she went in straight panic mode. She was screaming and yelling, crying, saying my baby's gone. She was hundreds of miles away and couldn't do anything, couldn't go help look for him. And after telling Taylor what happened, Taylor ends up calling 911 from Colorado to Las Vegas. Also, after Taylor hears this news, she gets on the phone with 911 from Colorado to the Las Vegas Police Department to report Amari as missing. She, on the 911 call, says, I need to report an Amber Alert. My son is missing. Ma'am, who has your child? I don't know. Uh, I was, my boyfriend said that a lady was knocking on the door this morning at six and said that she was my baby daddy's sister and said that uh, she was there to pick him up, that everything was already pre prearranged and I spoke to nobody. So they came in and, and took him and ran out the door with him. And so I don't know if it is his sister, if it's some a total stranger, I don't know. Police officers went to the apartment where Terrell was staying and they questioned him. He told them the story and because it was, an, it was a biological aunt who came to allegedly pick up Amari, they ended up clearing the call as a civil matter um, over a possible custody battle. Taylor said that her mom lived in the country and the airport was two hours away. She said she probably drove over 100 miles per hour just so she can hurry up and get to the airport to get back to Las Vegas. When she finally arrived in Las Vegas, Nevada at 6 p.m. that same Wednesday that Amari was allegedly picked up, she ended up calling 911 again to report Amari missing. Officers once again went to the apartment and they were unable to locate Amari. Las Vegas police then reached out to Amari's family on his father's side in an effort to find Amari. However, they all denied involvement. Residences were searched in Las Vegas, Reno, Southern California. The lady who allegedly came to get Amari, her name actually came out to be Jasmine Stovall, um, who is Giorgio's sister. Her home, Giorgio's home, his mother's home, his grandmother's home were all searched with no evidence found of them even having Amari. Taylor and Terrell had an interview with Fox 5 local news here in Las Vegas on May 7th. Taylor tells them she has always tried to be cordial with Amari's biological father, but on Monday they spoke and got into a, an argument because she was out of town without Amari. Then on Wednesday is when his sister allegedly came to pick Amari up. She says Giorgio's family did know the area that she she resided in, but they didn't know the exact apartment number that she was staying in. She claims that they must have stalked us until they found out where the baby was. 
She then goes on to tell the reporter about what happened. Um, Trill's standing right next to her. I'm not sure why she's telling the story and Trill's not because she wasn't there and he was. But she ends up telling the story of what happened. She said that Trill and Amari woke up and Trill fed Amari and then he lay down on the bed while on his phone. During this time, Amari was playing with his toys in his blue striped sleeper. On his sleeper was a bear on the chest and his feet had little heart designs on them. Then around 6 a.m., that's when he heard the knock on the door from the lady representing herself as Giorgio's sister. Then around 6 in the morning is when he heard the knock on the door from the lady representing herself as Giorgio's sister. When the reporter asks Taylor why the sister would take him, uh, Taylor begins to respond with because the dad wanted to be in the child's life. Then Terrell interrupts and says he didn't want to see him being raised by her and I. The reporter then says, if Amari or the person who has Amari is able to see this right now, what would you like to say to them? She says, quote, mommy and daddy love you, end quote. Taylor then says, people are pointing the fingers, causing more stress for us, and information out there is inaccurate. If we knew where he was, we'd bring him home. And this is very important right here. Terrell also had a few things to say. Um, I'll play a short clip here of him actually speaking in the interview. What's really sickening is that people is making assumptions, thinking that I have to, something to do with it, that I have her manipulated in some way, which that's sickening to me also because he, he loves us. I mean, we, we ain't never do nothing like that to him. During this whole 28 minute long interview, Terrell seems to be looking down a lot, not really making eye contact with the camera. Even when reporters are asking him questions, he's not really looking at them straight in the eye. And even towards the end of the interview, he ends up disappearing off camera. I'm assuming he goes in that house that they're standing in front of. I'm not really sure, but he goes in for a few minutes before coming back out. Taylor's demeanor Oh, she got a lot of um, backlash for this um, and very judged for this, but her demeanor um, on this day, this is the day after her son was allegedly taken. She's very, her demeanor is very calm. She's very relaxed. She doesn't seem, you know, kind of like in distress. She doesn't seem worried at all. And she got a lot of backlash from this due to her not seeming to be in distress. Um, now, my thoughts on this is she doesn't believe that her, or she doesn't think her son was abducted by a stranger. She knows these people. This is the father of her child. Um, she's met this family. I'm sure she knows the kind of people that they are. So she's thinking her baby's dad's family has her son and not a stranger. So of course she's going to be calm and relaxed. Like, I mean, I would, I wouldn't be that stressed if it was my child because I know eventually I'll get my, my child back. I'm going to go to court and I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to get my baby back. Um, so that's what I think is going on here. I don't believe she had something to do with it or she was covering up anything. Now, um, I think she truly loved this guy, Terrell, and wanted to believe this story that he was telling her. Um, I think in the back of her head, she was thinking maybe it's a lie, but she's still wanting to believe that it's true. So I don't believe that her demeanor is anything to judge. I think um, she just knew that her child wasn't in danger and was alive. Now it would be different if it was a stranger, then it would be, you know, complete panic mode, um, not knowing where your child is or if he's safe or even alive at this point. People handle things in different ways. That's just my opinion on this particular interview. I hope me looking down at my notes very often in this video isn't really bothering a lot of you. I don't usually do that in my videos, but like I said, this is a new case and I wanna get everything as accurate as possible. On May 6th, Las Vegas homicide investigators searched Taylor and Terrell's apartment. They found blood in the, on the bedroom wall and a bag of soiled clothing belonging to Amari in a plastic bag. Police released a statement saying after the initial investigation, it was clear that the circumstances of Amari's disappearance were suspicious. Because of this, the Las Vegas Police Department brought in all available resources, including the homicide section. As the investigation progressed, detectives developed 27-year-old Terrell Rhodes as the primary suspect. 
Police question Terrell again and he denies any involvement. He was not arrested after this interview, but he was definitely on the police's radar as their primary suspect. They were just getting all of the pieces together and letting the pieces fall into place while Terrell continued to lie about his involvement. They do a deep dive in Terrell's criminal history. Um, they find out that Terrell did some time in July 2017 at the Nevada Department of Corrections for burglary, robbery, and battery with intent to commit robbery. He was released from prison, went back to prison, and then was released again in December 2020, which was five months prior to Amari's disappearance. Police speak to Taylor's mother, Carrie, and she didn't have anything really nice to say about Taylor or Terrell. Taylor being her oldest daughter and Amari being her only grandchild, she claims that Terrell was very abusive not only to Taylor but also to Amari on multiple occasions. She also says that Taylor loved Terrell so much she would never leave him no matter what he did. He could do anything and she would never leave him and that's from her own mother's mouth. Her question to Taylor was, why in five days were you here in Colorado and not one time did you video chat with my grandson? I mean, a whole five days not, you know, FaceTiming your child um, just to check on them. I know two-year-olds don't really talk that much and conversations are boring. Trust me, I have three kids, but um, I would just want to see them, make sure, you know, they're fine, they're safe. Sorry, there's like a dirt bike riding by, but hey, that's Las Vegas for you. <laughs> Taylor's mom also told reporters that there had been a CPS case um, filed against Taylor in the past. Now, this CPS uh, complaint was for child abuse towards Amari. Within the last year, the CPS did look into the allegations but didn't decided to close the case due to no evidence of any type of abuse. Now, from what I've seen, loved ones of Taylor were concerned for Amari's safety after she started dating Terrell. So it wasn't Giorgio's family, it was Taylor's family who actually contacted CPS. When reporter Vanessa Murphy interviews Carrie asking if she thought CPS would have investigated more into the case, do you think Amari would be alive today? And Carrie responded, yes, ma'am, he would be just fine. Then on May 11th, Terrell confesses to Taylor saying that he beat Amari for urinating in his clothing multiple times. Taylor then immediately told police about this confession, and while she's at the police department telling the police what Terrell had just admitted to her, the Fox 5 News was trying to contact her. She answered very briefly saying, quote, he killed my baby, he just confessed, I'm with Metro now, we will speak when I'm done, end quote. Police go to the home of Terrell, and during his arrest, he did resist. And during him resisting, he was able to get a hold of one of the police officer's guns. Now, I'm not sure um, which article is true. I did read a few different ones. Um, some leave this part out and some include it. It does say that he actually shot, fired one single shot at an officer, but then some news articles don't have that in it. So I'm not really sure if he really did or not. But the situation was quickly de-escalated and was under control within minutes. 27-year-old Terrell Rhodes was arrested and booked into the Clark County Detention Center for open murder and also additional charges forthcoming. I know resisting arrest and also um, assault on a peace officer was a few I seen listed that could be added on as his to his charges. After being arrested during an interview with Terrell, he finally admitted to an investigator that Amari urinated in his clothes several times, which made him extremely upset. He then hit Amari on his body three or four times with a closed fist. He said at some point Amari turned black and blue, or I'm sorry, purple and blue, and stopped breathing. He claims he attempted CPR, but was unable to revive him. He then admitted to carrying Amari outside and disposing his body. He did not say where the location of Amari's body was at this time. I'm not sure if he ever even disclosed that. The next day after Terrell was arrested, Wednesday, May 12th, around 1.30 p.m., a week after Amari was first reported missing, Amari's body was found behind the office building at the Siegel Suites on East Twine Avenue in Las Vegas. One minute away traveling by vehicle and a four minute walk. Now this part of the video is very heartbreaking. Um, I'm going to put another trigger warning here. This video does con contain the coroner's retrieving Amari's body. 
Um, it does not show his body bag or anything like that. literally right around the corner from where Terrell was last seen with Amari. The same day Amari's body was found was also Terrell's first court appearance at 9 a.m. May 17th was Terrell's scheduled court hearing, but his attorneys only showed up to this hearing to learn that the judge decided to combine all eight felony charges together and not charge him separately. His attorney also asked um, arraignment to be delayed for two weeks due to Terrell being in quarantine. Now, the news did say he was being quarantined due to COVID. Officials released a statement saying that Rhodes has been quarantined and his next court hearing is scheduled for June 1st, 2021 at 8 a.m. And that's all we heard from reports about that. So maybe we'll get a few more details as time goes on when he has a court hearing that June 1st. Now, some things that I have seen online regarding Taylor, I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate or not. This is speculation. Um, I kind of think this is what's going on and a lot of people agree um but according to people online and people who actually knew her they claim that Taylor was an escort um and that Terrell was her boyfriend pimp so what I mean by boyfriend pimp is a man will play a role as a boyfriend they'll take care of your kids they'll you know use your house they'll use your car they'll even buy pay for your nails to get done but in reality, they're not working. They are using the woman because the woman is the one going out and getting paid to use her body and coming back and giving their boyfriend pimp their money. So they're not really taking care of the woman. They're managing their money, um, the woman's money, and acting like they're, they're caring for this woman with her own money, if that makes sense. Now, Terrell is playing the role as her boyfriend. He's living with her. He's even playing that stepdad role to Amari and even taking money from Taylor that she's earned from escorting. He was in full control of what Taylor did. Um, now, he didn't care what she did um, as long as he was getting money. He didn't care if she was intimate with other men, again, as long as he's getting money. I also saw that people are speculating that Terrell only babysat for her to go on her dates. Um, again, of course he would be okay with babysitting because he's pretty much getting paid for it. He has a roof under it, over his head, he has a car to use, he has money in his pocket. Just this free ride. Again, there is no proof of this. Um, this is just what people are saying who know her or people who are just looking on about the story. If this theory is true about her being an escort, she wouldn't want to take Amari because her mom is not mobile. She needs help. She just had surgery on her foot. She can't care for Amari while Taylor goes on and works, um, you know, goes on these dates. I believe if this were true, she would want to take full advantage of being in a new town um, and getting new dates. So I believe she wouldn't have been able to take care of her mom and also go on these dates with men if she had Amari. So I think that's why Terrell was okay with watching Amari. I know a lot of people who are in these unfortunate situations where they think that men really care about them and their kids when really they just want their money. They're not faithful. They're not, um, they're not respectful. They just want the girl's money. These men are lazy. Like, Ew. Um, to use a woman for money instead of going out and getting their own hands dirty um, is unattractive. It's childish. Um, I think that would just make me feel less of a man if I were that man. But I won't go any further um, about that situation. Um, I'll just say that I'm very blessed to have a husband who wakes up at five in the morning every single day and works his behind off Monday through Friday and um, contributes with me, um, not just one-sided where I'm paying for everything and he's not or vice versa. That is all that I have on this case about two-year-old Amari Nicholson. If anything changes when Terrell goes to court June 1st, I will update my description with any further details, so be sure to come back and check for that. I also want to say thank you to everyone who 
has watched my videos and continues to watch my videos every week that I post one. It truly means so much to me. Um, you have no idea. But if any of you have any advice on maybe changing my volume or my background or my just my audio, any 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 I almost said any information. If you have any advice to help better my channel and to make it more enjoyable for you guys to watch, please please comment below and let me know or message me on Instagram, Kendra M O B, that's my Instagram, or TikTok, Kendra Steinberger. Um, just message me anywhere with how I can make my channel better. I would really appreciate it because you guys are more experienced than I am. I mean, I've watched True Crime too on YouTube for years now. I've listened to podcasts, um, but it's different when you're you're actually doing it yourself. Um, some things might sound good to me that don't sound to my audience, don't sound good to my audience. So please let me know how I can make it better. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and it was easy to follow along, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.